board games in the board game hobby is fairly niche, and even more niche are modern biblical board games. Disciple Detective by Funhill Games is one of those. They've actually made quite a few, and I've gotten a chance to play them, that take root from some of the original games like Pandemic and uh, other worker placements and formed into a biblical narrative type of game. And this one does something similar with a game that functions kind of like Hanabi. Disciple Detective, you're going to be getting a certain number of disciples. You are going to be facing them away from you so that you can see uh, basically the back, what is known as you're going to be looking for, and you're going to be trying to decipher what dis disciples are inside your hand, on your in your hand. Uh, of course, the trick is you're not going to know what they are, but you will know what everybody else's cards are. Unlike the game Hanabi and others like it, you are actually going to be playing either cooperatively or competitively in this game by trying to help deduce what's in your hand, as well as helping your opponents deduce, or simply worrying about yourself. Now, of course, there's some trickery in the game because not all disciples are as specified and certain characters are going to try to deceive other players or even you as you're trying to guess which ones they are by their number or what they have written in the Bible or any of these other great things that you'll be using to try to deduce who is what and where and when and how. You'll be using the player boards as well to give you some information. And of course, you're going to have a suspect card which will label all 14 disciples that you can cross off as you complete the game. And if you can, in the cooperative version of the game, decipher all 14, you'll win. And in the competitive variant of the game, if you can decipher all the ones that are in your deck and in your hand, you will win. Regardless though, we'll take a look down below. I'll show you what's in the game, uh, what comes in it, and then we'll talk about how to play the game, and then we'll do my review. And uh, you guys can decide whether you want to pick this game up or not in the description down below. So here we have the components for the game Disciple Detective, everything included so you could play up to four players. And you'll be getting Disciple Reference Sheets, which you'll be utilizing to determine what Disciples have what traits, as well as what quirks. Certain Disciples will have quirks, and we'll change the game and flip it up on its head. As well as, of course, the number and name of the Disciples themselves. You'll also be getting this stack of cards here, all 14, one for each different Disciple, that will tell you their traits, the names, and some artwork, as well as the back of the cards, which are going to uh, give you a uh an idea of what you want to ask on your turn to try and decipher what you have in your hand or what you want information you want to give to your opponents depending on the game that you are playing. You'll also be getting these dry erase markers that you can go ahead and utilize for your suspects card as well as for the back of any of the cards in your hand. You can write down on these cards while you're playing the game if you're not so great at memorizing, especially when you have a lot of cards in hand. You'll be getting a timer here. This timer is a 30 second timer that will be used turn by turn if you want, and you don't have to if it's not your type of cup of tea, I should say. And then of course, you're going to be getting these clue tokens. These things will be used in the cooperative variant of the game. If you run out of them, you're going to lose. And finally, you're going to be getting, of course, the box back there and the rule book, which explains the cooperative variant as well as the competitive way to play the game, Disciple Detective. Okay, you know what you get in the game. Let's go ahead and take it down below. I'll show you an idea of how it's played. Now, of course, you're not supposed to be looking at the cards, but I need to kind of give you an idea. So we'll we'll kind of cheat in that manner, and then we'll come up and discuss the game. This is a two-player setup for the game Disciple Detective, and we will discuss the cooperative and the competitive gameplay features, but that will be saved for the review. I'm just going to explain how the game is played in the cooperative way, and then I will go ahead and explain to you all the different variants up above. To play the game cooperatively, you're going to be playing two, three, or four players, and depending on the number of players is how many Disciples you'll have in your hand. In a two-player game, you're going to get four cards, and then in a three you'll get three, and then in a four you will get two cards. So more players equals less cards in hand to decipher. Every player is also going to get, be getting one of these suspect cards, which is something that you can use to mark off the suspects that you have eliminated or chosen to eliminate, and then of course you'll have your hand. Now in this game, much like the game Hanabi, you're not actually going to know what's in your hand. So when I'm actually holding this up, it's going to be holding like this. So if I'm over here, and then my opponents will see what cards I have and I won't be able to see what mine are, but I can see what they have. So if Callie were to flip these up just like that, I would know what these cards are, but she would not. All she's going to see are the backs of these cards here. 
So we've got our four each. We've actually shuffled this deck up. This is the deck of the rest of the disciples. Minus one, you're always gonna get rid of one. We'll have this timer, and if you wanna play with it, you can. It's a 30 second timer for turns where they go back and forth. And we're gonna set up seven clue tokens. These tokens are going to be used whenever you take an action. And an action is going to involve either A, giving a trait clue, B, ordering a player's hand, or then you can choose to guess a disciple, which will not cost you a clue. Now, here's how it works. On my turn, I, or basically whoever goes first, which is the person who last wore sandals, interestingly enough. So whoever last wore sandals will go first. And we'll just say I was the last person to wear sandals. So I can go ahead and give clue traits. If I do that, I will say, um, I don't know, we'll say father. And then I would actually point at the cards in each player's hand that has the father trait. And the father trait is actually the little face there. To which case, they can then start circling certain things on their in their hand, on the, on the cards there, to remember which of them I marked down as having the father trait. They'll also be able to utilize this reference sheet, which will tell them... Um, basically what char characters have which traits. Now, of course, there are quirks in the game, and quirks can be played with or without, but in the base game, we will be playing with them, in which case certain characters will do certain things. Like Peter, he's afraid, and whenever a hand is ordered, he will always be the last in order, even though he's number one, right? Speaking of order, the second action I can do instead of giving a trait, which are one of these guys here, is I can go ahead and order a player's hand. So they'll let me see their hand. I will then say I'm going to order, and then I will move these cards into the order from least to greatest. So in this case, it could be one, two, three, and four, and I would make sure that they knew this was the least and this was the greatest. I wouldn't be able to tell them any more information other than just ordering their hands to all players. After I've chosen to do that, I would then go ahead and lose a clue for either to give a trait or to give an order to all the player's hands. The last thing that I could choose to do is actually choose to guess a disciple from my hand. Now, based on what clues others have given me and cards they've pointed out and the order in which they've moved my hand around, I can choose to guess a card in my hand. I'll say, oh, is this Peter? And then I'll reveal it. Oh no, it was Judas. In which case, I would have to leave it. I, they, would, they would tell me. I wouldn't actually get to look at it. I'd be like, oh, is this Peter? They would then say yes or no. If it was yes... I would go ahead and put it down and I'm going to score one of these back for my team. And these are very important to keep because if you run out of them and don't have any when you need to get rid of one, you lose the game. If it was, of course, the wrong one, I keep it in my hand without knowing which one it was, other than the fact that it wasn't Peter, and I would lose one of these and the game would continue. So you have to be very careful. Another aspect to it is if I guess this right and I don't actually want one of these, I can instead give another clue out to players, which in turn is very similar to just taking one of these guys regardless. And that's pretty much the game and how it goes. When you, spe when you, you say, okay, this is John, I put it down, you take a new one of these cards and put it into your hand secretly, and then you keep playing the game up until the point every single player guesses all of the disciples if you can guess all of them except for the one that you took out at the beginning of the game you guys will win the game disciple detective in the cooperative variant of the game okay so let's go ahead and come up i'll discuss how the competitive variant works which is very very similar and then i'll tell you what i think about it and maybe i'll secretly get Callie in here as well Fun Hill Games has brought us games like Wisdom of Solomon and Kings of Israel. Both games I really enjoy. They share similarities with the game Pandemic on one side and then a worker placement on the other, but they are their own unique game in and of themselves, which is nice because you're going to be able to get people from your church group or from your church, as well as maybe at a Bible study or even just playing a game at your house to jump in and want to play this game. It's very modern. It's a very unique, very interesting game. Now, with this one here, Disciple Detective. This one reminds me of Hanabi. It has a lot of similar feel to it in which you're going to be hiding the cards from yourself, but everyone else will get to see them. But it's also quite different as well, much like their other games, which I really like about this company. They they know how to do it, I think, for, for what crowd they're going for. So they're going to have a certain number of these guys here, these disciples, and it's going to have their traits on them, and you're going to be asking questions about you know you're trying to figure out what's in your hand while giving everybody else information going back and forth the artwork is very solid on the cards very nice very nice artwork in fact and uh it has a lot of deductive aspects to the game uh, this one is unique in the fact that it has these things called quirks and quirks change the game up and make it challenging to figure out which disciple is which because 
you might think you have number one, but you probably don't because Peter's always never ordered as number one. Or maybe uh, Paul, injured. He doesn't have an occupation or a writer trait, even though he technically does. Judas is a deceiver and always says the opposite when talking about his traits, and the order is still normal. So he normally only is the father, but in fact, he's every other trait, even though he isn't, right? And so there are all these different quirks on the disciples that changes the gameplay, and you have to decipher them based based on what information you've been given, as well as the information that is not given. So that can actually be very, very useful as well. And how your opponents choose to give you clues actually can make quite a difference in the game. You might not think something is as helpful as it might actually be, because they might be giving you a specific piece of information that is going to to have, help you decipher a, a specific disciple that is in fact using its trade or quirk in a unique way. And that was a learned experience for me as we played the game. There are a certain number of clues you get, and after seven, if you run out, you're going to lose. However, if you're able to at least find one or two disciples before running out of seven, you're going to gain some back. So the idea is you're trying to be able to decipher between I don't know, three to four detectives after seven, because then you're going to get at least four back, and you need to hold on to just enough in order to keep answering questions and keep deciphering. Now, some players are obviously going to be better at this game than others. I'm not very good at this game. However, I do enjoy it, just like I enjoy Hanabi. But, of course, I'm not good at it, and so it can be very stressful. This, this game and games like it are pretty stressful, in fact, because you are not only working for yourself, but working against, uh, working with your opponents. Uh, that being said, there's also the competitive variant of the game, in which case you have a certain number of cards in your deck and in your hand, and you are going to be asking questions regarding your hand, and then your opponents will move cards based on the traits they choose or how the order they, they see fit. In which case, it plays just like the original cooperative variant of the game, but you're only working towards your own goal. And if you can satisfy the goal, which is deciphering your, enti your entire de detective selective, <laughs> <laughs> or detective deck and cards in hand, then that is going to have you win the game. Whoever can do that first is the winner. I, personally, I like the cooperative variant better because it's already stressful enough without having my opponents try and mess with me even more. But regardless, both play very well. They share a lot of similarities with other games that I've played before, but they have their own unique twist to it, has a nice biblical theme to it as well, and it's quite enjoyable. I really found a lot of fun in this game, and I think for the most part, you guys will as well, as long as you don't mind the game that can be a little stressful. And of course, learning that you're not going to be an ace pilot the first one or two games you play. You'll have to learn as you progress, and that is similar with a lot of the games in this type of category of hidden information and deduction and deception. You'll have to kind of like deduce things and understand your your people around you, because every single playgroup you play with in a game like this is going to be played differently based on what information they're trying to give you. Overall, a fun game. I strongly recommend you take a look at it down below if it's a game that sounds interesting to you. Disciple Detective? Pretty, pretty fun! Pretty fun! Thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment, as well as our website, unfilteredgamer.com. We do giveaways, we've got a blog post, and we've got our Kickstarter board game list where you can take a look at all the games on Kickstarter without having to go through that search function, which is quite pesky if you ask me. And if you would like, please hit that subscribe and the notification button. It does greatly help us, and we do greatly appreciate it. And don't forget to check out the game, Disciple Detective. You want a game that has some interesting aspects to it, some modern style, biblical themed board game. Quite fun, quite enjoyable. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I hope you guys have a blessed, wonderful day.